In this video, I'm going to talk you through my entire investment portfolio that I've been building up since I started investing in 2015. We'll talk about stocks and shares, index funds, crypto, real estate, angel investments and startups, and a few other bits and bobs. And I'll share the lessons I've learned along the way investing in each of these asset classes. So if you're thinking of getting started with investing, or even if you're a seasoned pro, hopefully there'll be something in here that you can, fingers crossed, theoretically, hopefully learn from. Now, before we get started, I'll say the usual caveats that I always say when I'm making a video associated with money, and that is number one, this is not financial advice. It's purely for informational slash entertainment purposes only. Genuinely, I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. I've read a few blog posts and a few books about like money and investing and stuff. But beyond that, I don't know anything. So please take every single thing I say with a huge bucket of salt. Caveat number two, we are still sadly in the middle of a pandemic where people have been struggling financially and have lost their jobs. The point of this video is not to hashtag flex, and to be honest, my investment portfolio is nowhere near as impressive as other YouTubers like Onrigic and Graham Stephens are, so you can check out those if you really wanna see a flex. But whatever the case, especially if you or people that you know have been struggling financially, it's often not useful for our own mental health to compare ourselves to other people and to see kind of what they're doing. So please consider this a trigger warning. I'm gonna be talking candidly about money. I think it's a good thing to do overall. I think it's net positive that more of us should talk about money. But whatever the case, I trust that you know that if you're the sort of person who will find yourself kind of going into that spiral of comparing yourself with other people. Please don't watch this video. You don't have to. I'm not forcing you. No one's like propping your eyes open with a matchstick or anything like that. There are many better things you could do with your time. Many better videos you can watch on YouTube. There's probably a few suggested right there. Don't watch this video, please, if you're in that boat. And caveat number three, this stuff has taken a long amount of time to build up. I have been making money on the internet since the, since the age of 13, and I had seven years worth of failed businesses before at the age of 19, in my second year of med school, I finally made a business that actually succeeded and actually made an interesting amount of money. And so what you're gonna see in this video is seven years worth of trying and failing to build businesses, and then another six, seven years on top of that of building on top of something that's been successful. And to be honest, when you do anything for 13, 14 years, you're probably gonna get pretty good at it. But the point I'm making is that this is not a get rich quick scheme kind of thing. And in the slightest, this is very much a long game, but it's fun. And so if you're at the start of your journey, don't be disheartened, it takes a while, but hopefully if you keep at it, then maybe good things will happen further down the line. So with all that said, let's get started with the investment portfolio and let's start with stocks and shares. I've been investing in stocks and shares since 2015 when I first decided to get started with investing and I've got a video over there, which is the ultimate guide on how to get started investing in stocks and shares, which is a half an hour long introduction, basically everything you need to know to get started with this sort of stuff. Within stocks and shares, there are broadly two types of things that I invest in. Number one is index funds, and number two is individual stocks. So index funds firstly, I mostly invest, well, basically all my money is in the S&P 500. This is an index fund, which is made up of the 500 biggest companies in the US. And so what that means is that if you invest, let's say $1,000 into the S&P 500, then like, $40 will go to Apple, $30 will go to Google or Alphabet, sub $20 go to Microsoft, $20 to Amazon. So it's like all these big companies and by investing in the index fund, it's it's almost as if you are putting a small amount of money into each of these big companies weighted by their market cap, i.e. how big the company is. Why do I invest in index funds? Well, because Warren Buffett says so and because every financial advice type book that I've ever read says so, like there's no point in trying to pick individual stocks and trying to beat the market because that's it's not really a thing. Far more details in my investment video, but uh, let me show you how much I've got. So basically I'm with two providers. The first one is called Charles Stanley Direct based in the UK. Um, and that was what I first got started with investing. And so far I have put in 75,959 pounds into my ISA, which is an individual savings account or something like that. It's like a tax-free wrapper in the UK, whereby every year you can put 20,000 into that and then any gains you make are completely tax-free. So I've been maxing out my ISA since 2015, which is why this has a decent amount of money in it. And its current value is 124,960. And so the change in value is 49,000. Now this is pretty staggering. This means that I've just been putting money into this account and then completely forgetting about it. And over the last six years of putting money into this account, is it's made 49,000 pounds. That is utterly ridiculous. And that's sort of why I got started with investing in 2015, because before that point, if I made any money, it was just sitting in my bank account and depreciating thanks to inflation every year. But as soon as I started putting money in this index fund, it was like that money was making more money and I literally did not have to do anything. All I had to do was go through the effort of making the account in the first place and making sure I put money into it every month or every year. So that was Charles Stanley Direct. But then a few years ago, uh, Vanguard uh, decided to open up their investment portfolio platform to investors in the UK. Now, Vanguard is probably the biggest, most reputable company uh, around index funds. And so when they made a UK branch that was open to retail investors in the UK, I was like, all right, cool. 
let's open an account with Vanguard. And so I've got two accounts with Vanguard. I've got an ISA, which is again, the, the tax-free wrapper type thing. And I've got a general account, which is a taxable investment account. So once you've maxed out the ISA and you're no longer allowed to have tax-free share investments in the UK, at that point, you can put money into a general account where when you make money off of it and you get money out of it, you're liable to capital gains tax and a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, so far I've put in three years worth of money into the ISA. So I've put in 60,000, so 20,000 for the last three years and its current value, the ISA, is 73,902. So by investing 60K over the last three years, I have made 13K on top of that, which is kind of nice. And in the general account, I've put in, I think, around about 55K, and its value is 74K right now. And so again, by, by putting 55,000 into this account, and then just forgetting about it, like I, I never, ever, ever log into this, and just I don't, I don't even look at my account because it's one of those set it and forget it things. You just put money in, and then you forget about it. And then it's like once a year, if I need to count <laughs> I need to count my money. I log into the account and be like, oh, this is cool. I've just, this money has just been making money passively. And so overall in my Vanguard account, which is entirely the S&P 500, I've got 148,329 pounds of which 33.8K came from just the gains of putting money into the index fund. And then a few months ago, I decided to dabble with trading individual stocks because I came across this app called Free Trade, which is a UK app on how you can buy individual stocks. And Free Trade is pretty good. Um, let me show you what my free trade portfolio thingy-majiggy looks like. And the really cool thing about free trade is that if you sign up to free trade, you get this special link. And if someone else signs up to free trade using your special link, then you both get a free stock. And so because I share my link in some of my videos and on Instagram occasionally, I have eight free shares to claim. So let's see what free shares I've gotten. Oh, a free share of fuel cell, clean energy fuels, Asia Pacific, Barrett, SMFG, never heard of it, S4 Capital, British Land, Auto Trader, I've heard of Auto Trader. And so that's like more friends, more free shares go away. Anyway, I'll put my free share link in the video description. If, you, if you're if you in the UK and you sign up to free trade, we both get a free share and then you can share your link with other people and get free shares. It's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, in total, I've got 27,794 pounds in individual stocks, which is up by 7.7K since I started investing way back whenever it was. I can't remember when I started. It was in oh, December 2020. So I've been investing in individual stocks in free trade for about eight months at this point. If you wanna have a quick look at my investments, so we've got Tesla, um, Shopify, MP Materials, the NASDAQ 100, Netflix, Teladoc, Fastly, Fiverr, Etsy, MongoDB, Collectus, bloody hell, that's a lot of, lost a lot of money, Proto Capital. And then the rest of them are all the free shares that I've gotten over the years from like just people signing up to my thing. Oh, I got a free share of Apple at one point. That was kind of cool. Apple's gone up by 10%. Yeah, so just a bunch of this random stuff that you just get when you get random free shares through free trade. Like I didn't actually, you know, set out to invest in all of these individual stocks, but hey, I've got a lot of them kind of sitting around. The problem with this individual stock thing is that I actually, I have actually lost money on my investments since I started investing in individual stocks. The only reason I've gained money is because of this free share thing. Like, you know, oh, Shopify has gone up 35% MP materials, but like I've, I've actually lost a bunch of money. Like Teladoc, I put in 2000 pounds into Teladoc and it's now worth 1,300, like it's lost 34%. Fastly, I put in 2K, it's now worth 1.2K, it's insane. Um, Collectus, I put in 1,000, it's now worth 400, so I've lost 58% on that. Basically, all of these books, all of these financial advice books will say that don't bother investing in individual stocks because you're competing against institutional investors who like have their big ass computers and whose full-time job it is to invest in individual stocks. And as a retail investor, as a random dude on the street like I am, there's no way I can feasibly beat the market. There's no way I can actually compete against these sorts of people without insider knowledge, which insider trading, it's kind of illegal. And so everyone says, and Warren Buffett says this as well, that just in invest in index funds. You know, if you invest in all of the top 500 companies in the US, chances are then, then your investment gains are gonna go up as the market goes up. But it's genuinely very hard to beat the market. And I was thinking, you know what? Let me find some stock picks on like the Motley Fool and let me, you know, I'm going to invest in Tesla because I believe in Tesla. I'm going to invest in like Apple because I invest, I believe in Apple, et cetera, et cetera. And I've actually lost, I've actually lost money. Uh, whereas I've never lost money investing in index funds because it just tracks the market and the market always goes up. And so since this has happened, I kind of, I kind of view dabbling with individual stocks as being more like a fun thing to do on the side. And I'm quite happy to put aside 10, let's say 10% of my stocks portfolio to just dabble with individual stocks. But I fully expect that there's no way I'm gonna beat the market. I'm probably gonna lose money, but it's kind of fun. Uh, and so 90% of all of my stocks and shares are in the S&P 500 index fund and 10% I dabble with on free trade. And to be honest, I make most of the money from free trade just through the free shares link. So yeah, free share link in the video description if you wanna check it out. A few lessons about what I've learned investing in stocks. So number one, I really should have started earlier. I actually started making money in like 2013, 2014 with my business that was successful, but it took me two years of having money sitting in my bank account doing nothing 
for me to think I should probably invest this money. Like I did have that, that thought process earlier on in like 2013 and 14 as well, but something stopped me from thinking about investing because in my head it was like, oh, this feels really hard. I don't know how to get started. It feels really risky. I don't want to lose my money. All of these like stupid thoughts were floating around in my mind. And that meant that I actually started investing two years later than I could have done. And so I sort of wish I'd started earlier. Secondly, I realized over the last six years of investing that you cannot time the market and therefore don't bother trying. And there's a really nice phrase, uh, time in the market is more important than timing the market. And I know so many people who wanted to get started with investing and investing in an index fund, but they were like, oh, the S&P 500 is currently at an all time high. I'm just gonna wait a few weeks for it to go down. And then I'll put money in when the market goes down. And what these people are doing is trying to time the market. Like no one can time the market, it's literally impossible. And therefore the, the advice, which is not advice, it's just, just put money in and forget about it for 10 years and the market will just always go up over time. Again, more details about that in my video up there. The market will just go up over time and trying to time the market is always a fool's errand. In fact, one of my mates um, who will be unnamed, like about 18 months ago when we first kind of got talking, I was saying to him, hey, have you considered starting an investment account? And he was like, oh, you know, I've been thinking about it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Never bothered signing up for the account. Maybe he signed up for the account, never put money in it. He would have literally doubled his money. No, he wanted to double his money. He would have had like a 60% gain in the last 18 months if he just, I don't know, signed up for the account there and then. It takes about 30 seconds on Vanguard or something and actually just put, put the first bit of money into it. Because often when it comes to investing, just putting that first $100, $1,000 is the hardest part. And then you do it and you realize, oh, this is actually not so bad. And it becomes very easy to then top up your investments over time. Let's say, I don't know, you get money from a birthday or you do an extra shift at work and you've got the spare cash lying around. It becomes so much easier to say, hey, you know what? Let me do something sensible and put 20% of it in my stocks portfolio. Because at that point, you know what it's like, you know how easy it is, you know you can do it with a few taps on the app. And so, I don't know, if you're in that position watching this video where you're, you've been thinking about getting started with investing, just haven't really gotten around to it, then now, you know, the best time to start investing was 10 years ago, but the second best time is right now. So in total, we've got 300,990 pounds-ish in stocks and shares, mostly in the S&P 500, but a little bit dabbling in individual stocks like Tesla and Shopify and a little bit of Apple. Let's now move on to the crypto aspect of my portfolio. Now again, I've got a whole video linked over there and in the video description about how I lost $56,000 trading Bitcoin. I started investing, investing in Bitcoin in around about 2017 when the market was going up and then the market crashed and I lost a load of money. And then crucially, I had to take money out. I had to sell and realize those losses so that I could afford the deposit on this flat that I'm currently living in. And so my crypto portfolio was looking very, very in the red. It was like minus $60,000 for the last four years, but crypto has recently done a rally. And so here is a screenshot of my portfolio on Cointracker, which is a website that aggregates a bunch of different crypto wallets. Um, and at the moment, the portfolio valuation is 92,903 pounds, which is a 7.8% increase. So I've made 6,700 pounds from crypto over the last four years. Uh, this is like, <laughs> this is great because you, you can see from this graph here, I was so in the red for such a long time where I had put in like 90K into, or like 60K into crypto and it, it was worth like 12K. So that was quite demoralizing for a long time. But now, Again, with crypto, I've decided I'm just gonna set it and forget it. So I just have a weekly order where I buy some Bitcoin, buy some Ethereum and buy some Cardano for, of, all, of all things. And it just sort of it takes money out of my account and I've kind of forgotten that it's there, which means over time, hopefully I'm doing the thing of dollar cost averaging, buying crypto a little bit at a time with no intention of selling it for a very, very long time, trying to hold on to those diamond hands. And if you're interested in the portfolio allocation, you know, I've got about 50K in Ethereum, 34K in Bitcoin, 4K in Litecoin, <laughs> not doing very well. 3K in Cardano, not doing very well at all, and 500 quid in Dogecoin, which has lost 50% of its value since I started investing in it. So Ethereum, Ethereum has been good to me. Ethereum has been pretty good because the thing I didn't sell back in 2017 was Ethereum. So I had some Ethereum from way back then, which has kind of gone up in value over time. Let's talk about what I've learned investing in crypto. Again, all of like uh, much, much more details in that video about how I lost $55,000 and the lessons I've learned from it. But the most important things are like, number one, what I've learned from it is don't try and day trade. It's a terrible idea. If you want to get involved in crypto, then just buy and hold because you can't beat the market when it comes to day trading. Secondly, I really view crypto as being gambling. as like, it's pure 100% gambling. It's not an investment. It's actually just me gambling with my money. And so I'd make sure that I'm not putting any money into crypto that I might need in the next like five years. And lesson number three for investing in crypto is, and general investments 
is don't get emotional. Like a big part of why I put in so much money in 2017 was because I was like, you know, that fear of missing out. The crypto was going to the moon and I wanted to get in on it. And then like when it crashed, it was like, it was, it was just stupid. Like all of my decisions around crypto in 2017 were 100% emotional. These days, I treat it like more of a rational investor. There is this newsletter that I subscribe to called Crypto is Easy. The guy there has a plan. He's done the numbers. I just follow his plan and I just kind of do what he tells me to do. So if you want to check out Crypto is Easy, not an affiliate link, not sponsored or anything, but that's the newsletter that I use for my crypto plan personally. So we've talked about stocks and shares and we've talked about crypto. And so the total value is around about 390K or something like that at the moment. Let's now talk about real estate. So the thing with real estate is that it, ta it, takes a, it takes a very long time to get started. And so up until about six months ago, the only real estate I owned was this flat which has a mortgage on it, which is a joint mortgage that I have between me and my brother. We got this mortgage in 2018. Uh, and so the purchase price of the house was 370,000 pounds. We put in a 55,000 pound deposit. And so far I've paid back around 30K of the mortgage. And so there's around about 85,000 pounds of equity tied up in this house, but it's got a mortgage on it. And I usually have a lodger living with me and I've got my cousin living with me kind of further down the line and so on and so on. But I don't really consider this to be much of an investment. I mean, I think the 85K that's in the house is a reasonable investment. And the fact that I've been living with a lodger means that on the rent that I'm saving from living in this house and the fact that I've got a lodger living with me who's paying me rent, I get around about a 16% return every year, which is pretty solid. Like that's, that's not bad at all. And so I really only consider the 85K of equity that I've got in the house as being an investment. The rest of it, it's all, it's all part of the mortgage anyway. And the value of the house hasn't really increased very much in the last three years. And so, yeah, let's call it, let's call it 85K in real estate. But quite excitingly, I'm in the process of buying another three flats uh, to use as rental properties. The amount of paperwork it takes to get this sort of stuff sorted is an absolute nightmare. So we're still going through the paperwork for all three of those. Um, but that's because like since this YouTube channel and the business around it has been making decent amounts of money, mostly over the last year, year and a half, I've now kind of started putting some of that money into real estate. So I'll make a video about it when it's all kind of sorted. But right now we're just in the paperwork stage of trying to figure out how to get like buy to let mortgages under a limited company. And all the, there's all this sort of really complicated stuff in the UK around how to actually invest in real estate in terms of rental properties. And so if we take the 85 equity that we've got in the house, that takes our total up to something like 470K or something like that. There'll be the num actual calculator on the site, which actually has the numbers because I can't do quick maths. Let's not talk about angel investments. Now, what is an angel investment? An angel investment is when an individual, I don't know why it's called angel. It's just a bit, it's a bit self-aggrandizing. But basically when an individual investor invests in early stage startups. So through this YouTube channel, I've actually gotten emails from people who are starting companies and are looking for investment and want me to invest in their companies. And especially if it's products that I already use and I already like, I speak to the founders and they seem cool and they send me their pitch deck and, I th and I'm like, oh, cool. I'll invest a little bit of money in this company. I can't tell you how much I've invested in the companies. It's not, it's not that much, but so far I've invested in four companies. I'll put links to all of them in the video description. The first one is riverside.fm. I've been using Riverside for the last year to record my podcast. And so I reached out to the guys, we got talking and I invested in the company. So they're great. A video about Riverside coming at some point soon. Check it out, link in the video description. Secondly, a company called Peak. This is a company based in the UK. It's fairly new. They're trying to make reading a more social experience. And so they, I think, reached out to me initially. And then we got talking and they're really cool. So I invested in them. Um, and I'll be using their product extensively as, as it improves and once it goes out of beta. Thirdly, we have Study Stream, which is like this live co-working type group where I've done, I've dabbled with a few study stream sessions, but it seems like a really great model. And so I invested in them. And fourthly, one that's fairly recent, investing in a company called Heights, which is like a brain care supplement thing that I've been kind of dabbling with and became mates with like the founder the other day and decided to invest in the company. And so uh, I'm fairly new to this whole like angel investment thing. Um, I know a lot of YouTubers do it. I know like Casey Neistat, Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, these guys are all like big angel investors, which they don't, really talk about on their YouTube channels. I guess there's, I don't, I don't know. Are there rules against it? I don't, I don't think there are rules against it. Usually people are pretty public about that sort of stuff, but yeah, it's, it's a new area that I'm dabbling in. And so if anyone has any advice, reach out to me on Twitter. Like I'd love to speak to people who actually do angel investments because I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to invest in companies that I think are cool and trying to be, do my best to add value to them either as an advisor or as like promoting their stuff on my YouTube channel or whatever. Next, we have the asset class of cash. Cash is an asset class. I know Graham Stephan talks about how he always has like a million dollar plus like of cash just sitting in the bank account. 
waiting for him to pounce on some kind of real estate deal. I'm nowhere near as, as sophisticated as that. I don't really like the whole real estate thing because it's slow and annoying. Uh, and I basically carry zero cash. In fact, I hit my overdraft the other day because I just never have any cash in my current account because any cash I do have is either in the business account um, or it's in investments. And so I keep very, very little cash on my person at any given moment. And to be honest, my expenses aren't really that big. Any tech that I buy for the business is a business expense. And the only thing I really spend money on is like these Ralph Lauren shirts recently and like takeaway. Um, and so my salary through the business kind of helps with that. But what's kind of interesting is that because, again, because of the success of the kind of the magical internet YouTube money machine, we've got actually a bunch of cash sitting in the company account doing absolutely nothing right now. And so I was speaking to Ben Francis, the founder of Gymshark the other day, interviewed him on my podcast, which is gonna be launching soon. And I was talking to him about this, this thing and he was kind of joking that we're hoarding cash in the business and we've got to do something useful with that cash. And so right now we're actually in the process of hiring around eight or 10 people for the business. By the way, I'll put a link to our jobs page in the video description if you want to check it out. If you're interested in joining the team, if you're based in London, come, come work for us. It's kind of fun. And we're just trying to figure out better uses for that cash, which is currently just sitting in the bank account, depreciating via inflation every year. Now, the final asset class that I want to talk about is digital assets. Now, most people wouldn't consider this to be a standard asset class, like standard asset classes are stocks and real estate and crypto these days. But actually, if we think of like, what is an investment? An investment is something that you put money into initially and it, it makes money for you, which stocks do, which real estate does. But actually digital assets do that as well. And so what's an example of a digital asset? An example of a digital asset is for example, a YouTube video. So when you make a YouTube video and it's out there on the internet, people can watch that video where, while you're sleeping and you make money through AdSense on that YouTube video. And so in fact, let's have a look at our YouTube analytics. Let's, say, let, let's look at the last 90 days. So the AdSense on this channel has generated in the last 90 days alone, $121,903 just in the last 90 days. That is absolutely absurd. And if we look at where that money is coming from, last 90 days, okay, this is a passive income video, so which has made 47,559, that's insane. That video came out in April. Um, so I put the work into making that video back in April and then my team edited it very nicely. But that video is its own digital asset. In that, it's like an investment, it's been putting money in our pocket every day since then, because every day people are watching this video and therefore it's making money on AdSense. The ultimate guide to investing in stocks. I made that video in October, 2020. So for the last year, that video has been as an asset class making passive income. And that's made $4,800 in the last 90 days. Nine, eight habits that made me a millionaire. Bit of a clickbait title, apologies. But I made that in June, a couple of months ago. In the last 90 days, it's made 3,000. How to build a website, 2,000. How I type fast, 2,000. How I manage my time, writing online, answering uncomfortable questions for my personal assistant has made $1,600 in the last 90 days, 1,500, 1,200. And so, like YouTube videos are an asset class and most people don't think of them as such, but like if an investment is something that puts money in your pocket, then anytime you make a YouTube video, you are investing in yourself. You're, you're putting a digital asset out there online, which if it's evergreen content, could be making you money for a very long time. Um, and so in fact, there are still a bunch, of, a bunch of videos on here, which I made like two or three years ago that are still making money. And the amount of return you can get on this, like obviously, now that the YouTube channel is quite big, this is much higher than it was, but it just goes to show that if one video can make a few thousand dollars a month, and like, you know, if you're really lucky, a good real estate prop property will make a few thousand dollars in a year, then the sort of treating digital assets as their own asset class makes a lot of sense. And equally, there's online courses as well. I'm not gonna show you the online courses portfolio, but we've got a bunch of classes on Skillshare. Are they sponsoring this video? No, they're not, but I'll put some links in the video description if you wanna check them out. Bunch of classes on Skillshare. I put the work into making the class once. And so for example, if we use my, I, I, I have an online class on Skillshare about how to edit videos with Final Cut Pro. I made that class in September, 2019, so two years ago. And every single month since then, it's been making somewhere between $2,000 and $5,000 per month in pure passive income without really any promotion on my part. That is absolutely insane. That's a class that took me one day to film and took a freelancer two days to edit. And it's been making somewhere between two and 5K every single month without me having to do anything. It's just completely absurd. And it's, you just don't get those sorts of returns with the normal asset classes like stocks and shares and real estate. Maybe you get them in crypto, but it's a lot less consistent than that. And so generally when I think about investments, I think there's like the traditional stuff like real estate, stocks and shares, crypto. And then there's the non-traditional stuff. There's the stuff where it's almost like playing a game, right? Where if you're kind of a level one character, <laughs> if you're like the default character, the thing, the only real thing you can invest in is stocks and shares because you can get started with like $10, $100. 
As you level up and as you get more money, you can then start, you unlock the category of real estate. Because to invest in real estate, you actually need a decent amount of money to start up because uh, you need the deposit on the house, which is usually 25% of the value of the house, at least it is in the UK. But I think there's like an extra, an extra level here whereby if you're a creator and you have an audience on the internet, that unlocks the asset class of online courses and YouTube videos and eBooks and digital downloads and even physical products. My friend Olier has a physical product store where again, that that is an asset class. He's building a business. A business is an asset, a business is an investment. And so overall, if we exclude all the digital stuff, maybe there's just 500K-ish in my investment portfolio. It's nowhere near as fancy as some other big YouTubers are. Um, but I've made a bunch of mistakes investing over the years and hopefully that will increase over time. But really when I think about investing, I do think more about the digital asset classes than I do about things like real estate and stocks. I do, I view real estate and stocks as being kind of like a, if all else fails and if YouTube crashes and if my internet, if I get canceled and my internet career is gone, at least the stocks and the real estate thing will still be there. But really I think more, most of the gains are to be had in the digital realm. So. That's it, hopefully you found this video interesting. If you're interested in getting started investing in stocks and shares, you should definitely check out this video over here, which is my ultimate guide on investing in stocks. Loads of people have seen that and we've gotten emails from people like, oh my God, thank you so much. This video changed my life. I've started investing and I'm, I'm an investor now. So thanks so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you aren't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.